Hello everyone, welcome. I'm Chaturi Adrisingha and I'm an associate professor at Oakland University. I teach courses primarily in autism spectrum disorders in both the master's and the certificate programs. Welcome. Today we're going to talk about autism spectrum disorders, neurodiversity and challenging behavior. This year, the CDC reported that the prevalence for autism is 1 in 36, and it's reported across all racial, ethnic, and social economic groups. If you're a classroom teacher or you're a paraprofessional, you know that you've encountered a student with autism. So let's take a look at what are the characteristics of autism. We're looking at impairment in social relationships, impairment in communication, perseveration in specific stereotypic interests and activities, for example, dependence on routines and particular types of interests, abnormal responses to sensory stimuli, and for most persons with autism, there's some type of challenging behavior. Now, the complexity of autism is because it is a spectrum and you can find the individual with autism who displays mild characteristics of autism to very severe characteristics. And these are characteristics or needs are based on requiring support to be integrated in society as well as experience a high quality of life. So you'll find that individuals may need level one support, meaning requiring support, and that might be just cognitive supports or social skills or communication supports, um, to everyday substantial support where they would need help uh, with their everyday um, responsibilities like um, transportation, self-care and keeping a job to very substantial support where they need help to get dressed and in their daily living skills. The complexity of autism is that you could have someone with very, very high cognition who don't need any supports cognitively but still require level three or level two supports in daily living social skills. And um, this is fairly complex because what you might find in a K-12 system is you might have students uh, with autism across all categories. You might find them in a special education classroom that is just for students with autism you might find students with autism in a special ed classroom for everyone, or you might find uh, that you have a couple of students in your classroom in a general education environment, um, because these students may not need the cognitive supports or they are best served in the general education environment. However, regardless of needing cognitive supports or not, what is true for all persons with autism is that they're going to need some type of social skills and communication supports. So you might wonder what is autism or what is autism spectrum disorders? It's definitely neurological with possible genetic components. We don't really know, but we have twin studies where both sets of twins have autism and we also have twin studies where one twin has autism and the other twin does not. So it's really a complicated and complex um, issue. We don't know exactly what autism is. We know there is some genetic component and we know that it is neurological. What is very interesting in autism is that it may or may not be associated with an intellectual disability or cognition. What is true is that 
regardless of where that person's intellectual cognitive capabilities lie, all persons with autism will have lifelong struggles and lifelong challenges that is developmental. So briefly, how is autism diagnosed? It's diagnosed as early as 12 months. Um, most students um, get diagnosed at about two years of age. The diagnosis is done by a licensed psychologist, a psychiatrist, or a behavioral analyst or physicians. Each state has its own regulations. In our state of Michigan, you must have completed uh, ADOS or a observation um, schedule that is specific for individuals with autism together with something called the ADIR, which is a re uh, kind of a parent report in order to receive services via Michigan's autism reform bill which mandates that all insurance companies in the state provide um, services for individuals with autism from 0 to 26 um, years of age. Now, regardless of a medical diagnosis for autism, you in a school system can provide services and a student may qualify for autism services with or without a medical diagnosis for autism. This is done through a team, through the MET uh, process and through an IEP process at the school. So it's completely fine uh, for someone with autism to be served in the school districts without an autism diagnosis from a medical professional. How is autism treated? Well, currently there is no cure for autism. Interventions are designed to remedy and to address specific characteristics or symptoms of autism. And these interventions can bring about substantial improvement. The ideal treatment plan for autism coordinates therapy with the school system and with families. Right now, early intervention and ABA are considered gold standards for autism treatment. So finally, I want to leave you with one thing that I recommend all of you do uh, in your general education classroom or your special ed classroom. And this is to celebrate the success of your student every single day. Just write down one thing that went well. What's really important about this practice is that you focus on their strengths and on something positive. At the end of the week, you'll have seven successes to celebrate. At the end of the month, you'll have four weeks of wonderful little things that you can look back and reflect on and also have a visual indicator of how well the student has done. Um, at the end of the year, this will serve as a gift not only to yourself to reinforce your teaching practices and to serve as a memento for yourself, but also a gift for the student and their families. So that's it. I hope you've had a little introduction to autism, spectrum disorders, to neurodiversity, and you have a good sense of how to address challenging behaviors in your classroom. So take care and be well.